Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting edition of HL Chemistry Flipped Classroom. This is Mr. Lose. Today we're going to talk about SI units. Really, we're going to talk about the metric system. This is going to be mostly review um, for you, hopefully. In fact, I'm kind of assuming that you have worked at least some of the metric system. You have some familiarity and ability to convert metric units. I'm going to go over it very briefly, but if you don't have that ability, you should consider watching another video that you can find in um, the Edpuzzle folder here that covers the metric stair step conversion method, which I'm going to be going over briefly later. So the SA units are basically a modified version of the metric system. It was adopted in 1960. The metric system is a vastly superior system of measurement to the one that's used in America. Um, it just is. It's it's well thought out, it's put together for ease of use, and it is it is much easier to use than our system, um, even though you might not be used to it. So basically there are some units that were established as the base units. In other words, these units here can be used to basically measure everything else. Um, so for instance, the SI base unit for mass is the kilogram, and um, there still is, in fact, a cylinder of metal that is like the kilogram, and that is the standard by which all of the kilograms are based on. Um, <clears throat> the reason it's not the gram is the gram is just kind of a tiny amount of, of mass, so they use the kilogram as the base unit. Um, for length, the base unit is the meter. Now, originally there was a stick of metal that was like the meter that all meters is based upon. Now it's been defined, I believe, as... Um, the amount of time that, uh, the, amount, the distance that light travels in a certain amount of time or something like that. But but anyway, there's other base units here. Uh, degrees Kelvin, although we will use Celsius quite a bit, we will avoid F-bombs, um, meaning F for Fahrenheit for temperature, but we'll use Kelvin sometimes, we'll use Celsius sometimes. Let's not uh, drop any F-bombs uh, <laughs> when we're taking temperature measurements. Um, the, be the base unit for time is second, the base unit for the amount of stuff is mole, and we have electric current, which is the ampere, or amps. Um, I think there's at least one other here, the candela, but we're not going to worry about that in this chemistry class. There's also some prefixes. The easy thing about the metric system is you just slap a prefix on it, and um, so these prefixes can be used with any of the units on the previous page. A kilogram is 10 to the third grams meaning a thousand grams. But you could even say like a kilo second, for instance, which would be a thousand seconds, or you can put these prefixes on any metric unit to change the amount of stuff that they're measuring. Um, you know, realistically, uh, we will use kilo, deci, centi, milli, um, these other ones, not as much, maybe occasionally mega, occasionally micro. The other ones there are almost just sort of placeholders. Now there is a saying to help you remember these middle six, which are kind of some of the most important ones to help convert the units. Um, you may have heard King Hector died by is the base unit with no prefix, not showing here. So King Hector died by base unit drinking chocolate milk. Or another little mnemonic to memorize these middle ones, King Hector died by, which is the base unit, doing crystal meth. Um, so you can try that one if you prefer. Then we have micro, which is milli is a thousandth, so one thousandth of a meter, for instance, or whatever you're measuring. Micro is a millionth, so a micrometer would be a millionth of a meter. Um, you know, don't mix up kilo, which is a thousand kilometer, for instance. Kilometer would be a thousand meters, quite a long way, versus milli, which is a thousandth, a very small um, measurement. And micro, of course, very, very small. So here we have some metric conversions. And again, I'm basically assuming this is just going to be a very brief review. We'll talk about a couple different ways. Um, there's the other video. There's the stair step video that's in the EdConnect folder or dozens and dozens of other videos that are available on the internet if you need a little bit more help. But um, you might want to jot these down real quick. And uh, I'm going to move to another screen and we're going to solve these. Okay, so the first one, we are converting 150 milliliters, and we're wanting to know how many liters that is. So there's a couple of ways to do this. One way is to recognize that a milliliter 
Um, there are a thousand milliliters in a liter because milli means one thousandth. So there would be one thousand milliliters in one liter. So that sets up a little conversion factor that we can use to do this conversion. And so I could put my 150 milliliters here on the top, multiply it by this fraction. Since there's a milliliter on top, I need to put a thousand milliliters down here on the bottom. So I'm basically dividing by a thousand. That's moving the decimal over three spots. So 150 milliliters is 0.15. Now we should keep our significant figures the same. The way I have this written here has two significant figures, and this also has two significant figures. So that would be 0.15 liters. Now something else you can do that's pretty handy is what I call the metric stair step. And the whole point of the metric system is it's, it's really easy to convert these units. It's, it should be something you can do in your head. Um, I'm making some stair steps here, at least for the middle ones, um, the middle six. King Hector died by doing crystal meth. By is our base unit, so without a prefix, meters, seconds, kilometers, anything without a pre, or I should say, meters, seconds, grams, liters, whatever, anything without a prefix in front of it. So like if I'm doing this conversion with the stair step method, I'm going to start on, and that's ML, uh, in this case it's mill milliliters, ML. I'm gonna start on this step and I'm going to the base unit. So starting on this step, one, two, three, I move three steps and I move three steps to the left. So there's an understood decimal point right there. So I move that decimal spot three steps to the left and I get that and I get my answer. So if we kind of visualize the stair step, we can do these fast and easy and without dimensional analysis and I'm fine with you doing it that way. Um, the next one says uh, eight or 0.876 kilograms is equal to um, question mark grams. So that's kilo. So we start up here on the kilo step that's a little bit cut off. So starting on the step of the of the unit we're given, one, two, three. This is the base unit without a prefix in front of it. So I move the decimal three spots to the right, or I move three steps to the right. So I do the same with my decimal. My decimal's right there, one, two, three. Now the decimal would be right there. So it would be 876 grams. Um, the last one, um, through the magic of the pause button here, I've drawn the stair step again. I've drawn the last one, 2.50 grams equals question mark. Make sure you pay attention. This is a capital M mega grams. A mega is a million, so a mega is 10 to the sixth. Our little stair step here is going to fail us a little bit on this one. Uh, but there's a couple things we could do. Since mega is 10 to the sixth, that means um, uh, one gram... Actually, it's probably easier to do it from the perspective of the larger value. So let's do it like this. There are 10 to the sixth grams in one megagram. So we could do our conversion factor or our little uh, dimensional analysis here. Put the grams on top, 2.50 grams. And grams need to go on the bottom here, 10 to the sixth equals one megagram. So basically it's 2.50, oops, the six is a little bit cut off right there. Little six up there, yeah. Um, so basically it's 2.50 divided by 10 to the sixth is what we're looking at here, 2.50 divided by a million. And if we do that calculation, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five zeros. Uh, my unit is cut off there, of course, we should always write a unit, but 0 0.250 megagrams. Um, or you could just write it like this, 
and sign of notation, 2.50 times 10 to the negative 6 megagrams. That's neat, but easier. Again, sorry, my unit's getting cut off there at the end. Um, or you could, since uh, a kilo is, is 10 to the third, a thousand, and mega is a million, you could tack on three more steps here, three powers of 10. We could put a little mega up here in our stair step. And then we could realize, all right, I'm at the base unit here, grams. I got to move the decimal one, two, three, four, five, six times to the left to go to megagrams. So there's another way that you could get at that answer. So um, here's another situation that is a little bit interesting. Uh, <clears throat> one meter squared is equal to how many centimeters squared? So it might be tempting, since this is meters and this is centimeters, just to move the decimal twice to multiply it by 100. Um, but that doesn't work because when we square these units, that changes the conversion factor. And here's why that's the case. Okay, so let's say we did have a square meter. A square meter, if you think about it, its dimensions would be one meter by one meter, right? Because one times one is one, and then the unit would be meter squared. However, there are a hundred centimeters in, um, in one meter. So if we're thinking about the area of this square in centimeters, the area is a hundred centimeters by a hundred centimeters. So the area of this is actually a hundred times a hundred, which is uh, 10,000. 10,000 square meters, centimeters, I mean. So one meter actually equals 10,000 square centimeters. Basically what happens is, is if you're using square units, it's going to square the conversion factor. So let me go back to my a little whiteboard here. Maybe you want to jot these down and we'll, we'll go back at the whiteboard and take a look. Okay, I'm gonna try it this way this time. So we see one meter squared and we're wanting to know how many centimeters squared that is. Now, if we're not dealing with square units, we know that there are a hundred centimeters that is equal to one meter. That's if the units aren't squared. But if you're squaring the um, units, you also square the conversion factor. That's what happens. So this is actually gonna be 100 squared. There's 100 squared centimeters in one meter, square meter. So to square 100, um, that would be 10,000. So basically there's two zeros here, so I'm gonna have two sets of two zeros. That's the easiest way. And um, that would be the answer to that first one. There's 10,000 square centimeters in one square meter. Now suppose the second one here, the second one says there are 3.5, or it's saying 3.5 centimeters squared is equal to question mark millimeters squared. Now millimeters and centimeters are one step apart. So if we did not have square units here, um, in one centimeter there are 10 millimeters. That's if we're not squared. So that's my little conversion factor that I could use. If I square the units, I also have to square the conversion factors. 10 squared is 100. So it turns out that one centimeter squared is a hundred millimeters squared. So now I have a little conversion factor I can use to make this conversion. So we'll use dimensional analysis this time. Um, 3.5 centimeters squared. We want the centimeters to go away, so I put those on the bottom. The centimeters squared to go away, I put the 100 on top. So it's going to be 3.5 times 100. That means move the decimal two spots. And that's our answer. 3.5 centimeters squared is equal to a hundred millimeters squared, or, th or sorry, 350 millimeters squared. Um, the last one is 67.8 hectometers squared 
is equal to question mark kilometers squared. So a hectometer is a hundred and a kilometer is a thousand. So there are 10 hectometers in every one kilometer. And I'm just trying to make a little conversion factor we can use to make this calculation. Sorry, I'm losing my voice there a little bit. So here's our conversion factor, but these are square units, so we have to square the conversion factor if we're going to square the units. So therefore, there is a hundred hectometers squared in every one kilometer squared. So 67.8 hectometers squared. Do some dimensional analysis. Um, put the hectometers squared on the bottom. So I want those to go away. Put the kilometer squared on top. So it's 67.8 divided by 100. That would be 0 0.678. Kilometer squared would be my final answer there. Okay, so um, I, I bring this up really just to introduce something else that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, it's not like we're going to be converting square units all that often, but it does come up in an area that I'm going to get to in a second. So let's talk about derived units. Derived units are Basically, you don't need to make a new metric unit for everything. For instance, you do not need to make a completely new standard or a completely new base unit to do volume. The reason you don't need a completely new unit for volume is because you can get volumes from length units. You know, if you imagine a cube or a rectangular prism, I can measure its length, width, and height in uh, centimeters, for instance, and I can get its volume in square centimeter, cubic centimeters, I mean. Well, turns out the definition of a liter is a cubic decimeter. So one-tenth of a meter cubed, cubic decimeter, that's what a liter is. Uh, just another example of a derived unit, uh, the joule. The joule is an energy unit. It's equivalent to a kilogram meter squared over second squared. Don't worry too much about exactly how a joule is defined right now, but I just want to bring it up as another example of a derived unit, a unit that is derived from the other base units. Um, kilogram, meter, second, all our base units. So here's the funny thing, one of the many funny things about IB is for whatever reason they don't really like to use liters. Um, and they will in fact never use liters to represent anything on an exam. They will use these cubic units. So for instance, instead of using a liter, they will use cubic decimeters because these two things are exactly equivalent. That is the definition, in fact, of a liter is a cubic decimeter. So on an IB exam, you know, they wouldn't say a volume of 10 liters. They would say a volume of 10 cubic decimeters. Um, what's also true is that a cubic centimeter, a cubic centimeter is exactly the same as one milliliter. So if you can imagine a little tiny cubic centimeter box, uh, that the volume of that box would be one milliliter. So um, there, it turns out since this is like what we were talking about before with cubic units. Now cubic centi means a hundred and deci means a tenth, uh, a hundredth and a tenth. So you know they're only a factor of ten apart. But when you cube them, it cubes that conversion factor. So for instance, if this box was a cubic decimeter box, it would be one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter. That's one decimeter cubed. But there are 10 centimeters in a decimeter. So its volume in centimeters would be 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's a thousand cubic centimeters. So that's what I'm saying. There are a thousand cubic centimeters in one cubic decimeter. Now, since a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter, a cubic decimeter is also equal to a thousand milliliters, which is equal to a liter. So all of these things are equivalent to each other, and uh, that's handy to know when you're trying to convert between them or, or um, utilize conversion factors. So. Uh, for instance, here we have some units we're converting, except we're converting cubic units. And in this case, we're always converting between cubic centimeters and cubic decimeters. This is something that we're going to do pretty often. 
Uh, I'm going to break this down again and uh, bring up my little whiteboard. Okay, so the first one says 2.5 cubic decimeters is equal to question mark cubic centimeters. Okay, well, um, if we were doing a conversion factor, uh, deci means 10 and centi means 100. So therefore, one decimeter is equal to 10 centimeters. Um, they're one step apart on the little conversion ladder. However, since we are cubing this, we have to cube the conversion factors. So that cubes this. So it turns out that one cubic decimeter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. So that becomes my conversion factor. And then um, we have 2.5 cubic decimeters, so if I'm doing dimensional analysis, and I want to know how many cubic centimeters that is, so I put the cubic decimeter on the bottom, I put the 1,000 cubic centimeters on top, so it's 2.5 times 1,000, which is 2, move the decimal three spots, 2,500. So 2.5 cubic decimeters is equal to 2,500 cubic centimeters. But um, here's how I would do this. Again, the, the metric system is designed to be simple. Here's what I would do if I was doing this. Um, first of all, if we, if we magically redraw the stair step, um, and we remember that a cubic decimeter is actually exactly equal to a liter, and a cubic centimeter is exactly equal to a milliliter, when I make these conversion factors, what I'm doing is I'm just sort of like mentally converting these to either liters or milliliters and then just very quickly moving a decimal three spots. You're always going to be moving the decimal three spots in this centimeter to decimeter conversion. And you'll do this conversion a lot. That's why it's a good one to get good at. Um, 37 centimeters cubed is equal to question mark decimeters cubed. Okay, so again, what I'm doing is I'm just mentally saying, oh, cubic centimeters, that's the same as a milliliter. Decimeters cubed, that's the same as a liter. So this is exactly the same as a milliliter to liter conversion. So it's like I'm starting on this step, the milli step, and going one, two, three spots. So the decimal moves three spots this way. So here's the decimal here, one, two, three. That would be 0 0.037 cubic decimeters. So rather than trying to think about all that cubic units and all that stuff, I just make this little mental conversion and um, then I just move the decimal I think about the stair step. Another one, 853 cubic centimeters. And we want to convert that to cubic decimeters. Well, it's the exact same type of conversion here. Again, I'm mentally going cubic centimeters, well that's milli. I'm moving this the decimal one, two, three steps, three steps in that direction. So the decimal moves three steps in that direction. So it's 0.853 cubic decimeters. All right, and that, that is about it for SI units. Um, we will practice that more, folks, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.